Hey, it's Brent with Lankins Motorsports. This is our brand new Coyote uh, block from from Ford. I guess they, they don't call it Ford Racing anymore. They call it like Ford Performance Parts or something like that. But I kind of feel like um, a, a guy from, from the 60s going to the, the Ford dealership and buying parts over the counter and, and putting an engine together, which is essentially what I'm doing, uh, you know, 50... 60 years later so this is an over-the-counter engine block i bought it from ford um bought the cylinder heads from ford and uh, just you know have some aftermarket parts to go with it so our bearings came back from calico you can tell they're all pretty coated now i uh, got some arp main studs in here and we got our uh modular mustang racing uh piston squirter block offs those are down in there and got our block all washed and scrubbed out inside and ready for assembly so our crank is clean and what i'm doing now is i'm in the process of just we're going to knock all of our main caps on and uh, i feel comfortable doing that this time because i did check uh, preliminary bearing clearances last time so i feel pretty confident that these are the bearings that i will need these are um uh, Calico coated Clevite uh, 2292 HXs. So a little bit more clearance. But uh, we're going to get our caps on and torqued and then uh, measure our crank journals and start checking clearances. No need to do that on camera. Uh, there's just a lot of fasteners here. Uh, basically, six fasteners to every main cap, four, and then one on each side. Even the front main cap and the rear main cap have side bolts so very beefy stuff stud for the pickup we will not be using that since we're doing a uh, external wet sump the pickup will be welded to the pan but uh, all the mains are torqued we'll take some uh, crank measurements first we'll grab the first journal so I made sure to uh, zero my mic and we are at 2.6570. So we'll set our mic in the mic stand and uh, set our bore gauge to it. What are we seeing there? Two, whoops. I always hate doing this on camera. So about two, 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 three, two, three. So um, we normally aim for uh, a thou per inch of journal diameter. So uh, this crank is about two six fifty something uh, on the on the main journal. So we should at least be at uh two and a half thousandths but um what we're dealing with is an aluminum block that expands so um probably will expand anywhere from uh, a half thou to three quarter of a thou if i were to guess uh these are pretty close in diameter to um to an fe so an fe is 2750 so just a hundred thousandths off on the main journal diameter so if, uh, if we gain a half a thou clearance when it's hot, we'd be at around uh, 2.8. So if I'm anywhere in between when, when the engine is hot, uh, you know, 2.7, 2.8, uh, I'd even go for three thousandths. So we are well, in, um, well in, the, in the limits of where we need to be. So what I'll do now is uh, since I've done this one, I'll pop it off and go to the next one. All right, so here's my standard operating procedure. I check one, pull the cap off, check the one behind it, and um, we're getting repeatable measurements here. Uh, two, two for number two main. So we'll pull it off and go to the next one. One thing I'll show you is how much room the cap has around the stud. And this will come into play here in a second when we're um, 
setting the thrust bearing. I'll go ahead and talk about that right now, I guess. Um, so typical engines that I've been, you know, dealing with for, uh, you know, 15, 20 years, uh, there's always a flanged thrust bearing on the top and on the bottom. On the Coyote, you have the thrust bearing, uh, flanged bearing in the cap. You have a regular bearing insert in the block. And then you have this washer here. See, it floats. And um, that, that's just an insert. Um, when I first put this cap on, this part was sticking out way past this part, and I'm just not used to that. Normally when you put thrust bearings on, you have just, you know, uh, five or 10 thousandths at the most uh, to move the cap um, so that the uh, the flanges are, are you know, flush or parallel. And you usually do that when you set the thrust bearing with the crank. This one was sticking out probably, I don't know, 15, 20 thousandths to the point where, you know, it caught my eye and I'm thinking that's not gonna work. But what I did was I loosened up the bolt, the nuts, and just pecked on the cap until uh, everything was flush. So um, that'll take a little bit extra time when uh, we're putting the crank in and putting the thrust bearing cap on here. Um, we'll have to just take some extra time to set the cap uh, with the nuts loose to make sure that everything is nice and flush. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put some cinnamon sauce in here. Get all these bearings lubed up real good. We're getting ready to drop our crankshaft in. Tell you, I don't know who um, Ford's uh, crank grinder is, but they are um, excellent quality grinders. Uh, the journals, all the journals on that crank, the main journals, I mean, we were just getting variations of like one ten thousandth of an inch. So sometimes you don't see that kind of quality from uh, even the high end crank grinders. We get those all all coated up. And we'll drop our crankshaft in. I will tell you, this thing is a chunk. You wouldn't think that this little crank would be so heavy, but it is. So without the cap in there, um, you'll notice the crank wants to slide backward and that's fine because there's no thrust surface on, on the cap as I showed you before. Um, you also don't want to turn the crank. Um, and that's a kind of a general rule altogether um, because the mains don't stay straight until you put all the caps on. And that's even exasperated by the fact that an aluminum block moves around so much. So uh, you for sure don't want to spin the crank or do anything like that until all the caps are torqued. Okay, now we're just gonna put our main studs back in. Um, I'll run those down with a, with a battery uh, power driver, just zip, 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 zip. Um, and then we'll start getting our main caps on. Uh, we'll do um, the front four, and then we'll turn to this thrust cap because it requires a little bit more attention. Caps are on, and we're just gonna recoat our uh, ARP fasteners with some lube. After you run, run them in and out a couple of times, it starts to get dry. So recoat them. Also coat inside um, the nuts and on the bottom flange part of the nut. But you just want to make sure that you get an ample amount of um, lubricant there so you get a good accurate torque spec.
Okay, so the crank does a pretty decent job of lining up that cap, but I'm still going to give this a good whack to uh, to set the cap. First, we drive it backwards. You always want to drive it backward, and then you want to uh, make sure I have to back the camera up so I can see where my hand is. I don't want to hit a sharp edge with my with my hand. Give it a good lick forward. And then we'll um, wedge the crank forward uh, using the counterweight and the cap. And then I'm just going to uh, torque everything down and we'll check our clearance. All right, so I've got everything torqued and um, I'm checking my thrust clearance. And even though I can get a little bit of a click when I move the crank front and back, it doesn't want to stay where I push it to. So I'm causing some kind of a deflection. This is where, or I guess to the point where I don't like this design, because if I pull the cap off to see if this uh, insert is the problem, there's nothing on the block side to keep the crank from shooting out the back, if you, if you understand what I mean. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to sand the thrust bearing on the cap and sand this insert at the same time to see if it makes a difference or what I'm gonna have to do. So I'm gonna have to sit and think about this for a minute. Okay, so my game plan is pull this cap off, pull this insert out, since the cap is flanged on both sides, I can put the cap back on, torque it, check thrust, um, and then and then see if the cause of our our you know uh, we're not getting any thrust clearance basically. So we'll see if that's the ca if the cap is the cause of it or the insert's the cause of it. All right, so I've got about. Well, a little over 2,000, so it is giving me clearance now without the insert. So that means um, that I'm going to have to sand the thrust bearing on the cap. Uh, I want to see about five. So I have to sand the thrust bearing on the cap and then um, check it again and then sand the insert until I can duplicate the clearance. A lot of tedious work over and over and over, but uh, unfortunately that's what you gotta do sometimes. All right, so it turned out that it was the the thrust bearing in the cap that was the culprit. Um, I did not have to sand this insert, and I was a hair heavy with the with sanding the thrust bearing down. I got six and a half thousandths to, instead of five, but um, that's well within what I would accept and a little extra thrust clearance never hurts anything especially with uh, a manual transmission car or a torque converter that could balloon so we're in good shape and um, trying to think what my next plan of action would be um, I guess I could get this rear main seal plate on I just got to locate my bolts I can also get uh, uh, I have number one and number six rod and piston assemblies ready. Um, I can check bearing clearances on those guys and uh, maybe knock a piston in or two in preparation for checking piston valve clearance and uh, degreeing in the cams. Okay. All right, so um, the installations and instructions for this rear main seal plate is that uh, Ford wants a, an eighth inch bead of silicone to make as a gasket so this is the uh, motocraft ta31 this stuff is like concrete once it sets um you never want to put an oil pan on with this stuff or 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 anything like that or at least on an fe or a small block four because you you can damage the oil pans trying to get them off so i've already got our rear main seal lubricated because i'm anticipating that um once I get this lubed up, I'm trying to get some stuff out right now. 
So once I get this looped up that I don't want to be handling it. Yeah, let me turn around and go the other direction. I once built an FE and used this as the silicone to hold the intake down. And for some reason, I had to pull the intake back off. And when I did, I lifted, I pulled all the bolts out of the intake, hooked the carb plate to the intake, and actually picked the engine up off the ground using... Um, using this silicone, so that's how stout it is. So we've got some new bolts, and uh, I'm gonna slide this up over and get it bolted down. All right, so I uh, got this slit on there, and um, just gonna put our bolts in. Seal is lubricated, and the rear main seal cover has holes for dowels that are in the block. So this is a new block. I had to actually put the dowels in, and um, Everything's located off of that. So we'll just put these bolts in and uh, tighten them up and we'll be done. All right, so here is our diamond piston and molnar rod. And I've already marked our rod journal. It came in at 2.0861. We're gonna be using calico coated rod bearings. So you always wanna check uh, when you open up a new rod bearing package that uh, you need to follow. Like this one says, you can look, see it through the shrink wrap, upper. This one should say lower. Somewhere. Yep, right there. So uppers and lowers. And um, it, if it doesn't specify that, you can put them anywhere you want. But if it does specify that, then you need to do what it says. So... We're going to get our first rod bearing clearance check and see where we are. Two inches or two thousand, two inches, yeah. Two thousandths and a tenth. So our rule of thumb, remember, is uh, a thou per inch of bearing or inch of uh, crank journal, so we're at 2086 on the journal. We are at um, 2 thousandths and a tenth bearing clearance. Let me get my finger out of the way, sorry. Um, so coated bearing, uh, two inch, 086 journal, 2 thousandths and a tenth rod bearing clearance, we're in good shape. All right, so we got our block flipped over and um, Put the crank at bottom dead center for this number one piston. Uh, oil on the cylinder wall. And we've got our uh, diamond piston and molnar rod assembly in our total seal rings. I'm gonna pop the rings on. We've got our uh, tapered piston ring compressor. So we're gonna get uh, numbers one and six in the holes. And so with two uh, two pairs of cams, we need to degree the intake and exhaust on the driver's side and the intake and exhaust on the passenger side. So I like having a piston in each hole to do that, or at least I think that I'll like having a piston in each hole to do that. I've never put one of these together before, but it makes sense that you pop top dead center off of the cylinder that you're degreeing the cam on, so you, everything will be accurate. All right, so we got our piston and rod assembly. Our oil ring expander goes on first. Bottom oil rail. Top oil rail. Um, we got two different rings here. Um, you can always look and see if there's no dots. 
Like this one's got a dot on the top. Right there, if you can see it. And then you can also see that it's got a, a bevel or a chamfer on this bottom side. So this is the bottom ring and it's cast iron. So that makes perfect sense. This top ring is steel. You can see the, the color difference in it. It's got the bevel on the top. It's also labeled on the top. So I'm gonna flip this dude around. We're gonna make sure the, um, actually I'm gonna get my piston ring expander. Make sure the dot is up. I'm gonna expand this guy. Sometimes they're a little bit hard. And make sure we're still up on this ring. Okay. I'm gonna pop off my skirts. Put a little oil on the skirts. Don't get carried away. Um, I see a lot of people dunking pistons in buckets, and you don't need to do that. Rings will seat almost on the engine stand if you if you let them. And if you flood them for, full of oil, chances are they won't seat as quick. Come on, sweetheart. assembly lube cinnamon sauce and then we'll knock this piston in we're good to go and uh, I'll get number six knocked in so <clears throat> about got everything I need in to uh, set the cams and everything up with uh, the last step that I had was to see where the pistons are in relation to the top dead center so I can get some head gaskets ordered. Uh, once those come in, and I think I still need timing chains, but I have uh, pretty much everything else, if I remember right, the tensioners and uh, guides and all that stuff. Then I can start checking piston valve clearances and uh, degrading the cams in. But I'm going to measure for... See how, see how far the pistons are below top dead center and get some head gaskets ordered and then I'm going to call it a day. So thank you guys for uh, sticking around and watching the work go on this one. Um, as far as assembly goes, uh, there's general assembly rules that apply to every engine, but it seems like every engine family has its own little quirks and this one certainly has its quirks. You just have to uh, have to plow through and, and get used to it, I guess. But if you haven't taken uh, taken the time to subscribe, please do that and um, hit those like buttons. Both help me out considerably. But uh, I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you're having a good week, and uh, I'll see you next time.